Hello again. British juries have always been prone to delivering verdicts which fly in the face of evidence and reason. And a good job too, in general. <coughs> there was a time in the 17th and 18th centuries when judges would literally order juries to bring in guilty verdicts. And if they refused, then the jurors could themselves be sent to prison for bringing in the wrong verdict. Much better that we have juries that can deliver idiotic verdicts and that they should be compelled to do as some judge tells them. The business of the statue in Bristol being toppled and thrown in the harbour, which I'm sure viewers have been reading about this morning, the um, four young people who were responsible, among others, have been acquitted, even though they admitted what they had done in court. It's not the most foolish decision made by a British jury following a riot, not by a long chalk. In 1833, there was a very serious riot in Clerkenwell, um, a district in central London. During the course of it, one police officer was stabbed to death and two other officers received knife wounds as well. The men responsible were caught but first the coroner's um, jury brought in a verdict of justifiable homicide in the case of the policeman who had actually been killed. They said that the behaviour of the police was so, so violent that it was quite justified to stab one of them to death, which caused terrible shockwaves, obviously, um, throughout the government and through um, society generally. A man who had stabbed two of the police officers, and there was no doubt at all about it, was brought to trial at the Old Bailey. And astonishingly, the jury there refused to convict him. He was acquitted. And what's more, he was carried home on the shoulders of well-wishers after the Old Bailey trial. I give a link um, to a piece about this case in the description to this video. And the thumbnail to the video shows a riot in which PC Cully uh, was killed. The danger in the latest case of people being acquitted after the disorders in Bristol, though, are nevertheless fairly serious. Some newspapers are talking about the possibility of other statues being pulled down with impunity. But as we can see from the case of PC Cully being stabbed to death in 1833, the danger does not end there. If juries accept that causing damage to statues can be justified and excused because of the cause in which it was done, then the court might also follow the same line of reasoning when it comes to breaking the windows of a building or even starting a fire. What about breaking the windows of an unpopular politician's house or burning it down? Lynching somebody? There really is no end to the things which a mob might undertake if they felt that a jury would be on their side. To that extent, this particular verdict is likely to create a little uh, disorder in the future. In the case of PC Cully, the unfortunate police officer who was killed in Clarkerwell almost 200 years ago was really a matter of an innocent person being caught in the crossfire. The rioting mob was angry at the government and they were attacking the police officers, not as individuals, but they saw them as agents of the government. It's not difficult to imagine a time in the not too distant future when a protest against an unpopular government turned ugly in this country and a police officer was injured or even killed. Could a jury, jury return a verdict in the same unreasonable way that the one yesterday did? I think the implications of the verdict delivered in Brist the Bristol case will take a little time to sink in, but I can see trouble ahead if we're not careful. 
I'm sure we all remember that Winston Churchill's statue was vandalised and defaced during the same wave of disorder which ended in the toppling of Edward Colston's statue. Could a jury acquit those responsible for that action too? What about the attempt to burn the flag on the uh, cenotaph? Perhaps so, we just need to accept that the price we have to pay for having jury trials is that from time to time juries will bring in verdicts which really do seem to us a little bit mad. Personally, I would much rather have that than a court system which only gave results that the government and police thought were correct. <laughs>